You're watching WHSV News 3. 11 minutes of non-stop news and weather starts right now. Fire crews are working to put out a brush fire. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dion Guillory. Allison Bruner has the night off, and we start with that breaking news from Kiesel Town. I just got off the phone with emergency crews who say the fire is in the 2800 block of Mountain Valley Road. Now, there's no word at this hour on just how big this fire is, but we will, of course, continue to follow this breaking news and bring you new information as soon as we get it. More breaking news tonight. The body of one of two missing Virginia State University students has been found. Divers removed the body from the Appomattox River just a couple of hours ago. They are still looking for the other student. Jawan Holmes and Marvell Edmondson went missing Saturday. No word right now on which student's body was found. The medical examiner is testing for an ID. Your morning commute or just a drive around Harrisonburg running errands can be putting your life in jeopardy. That depends on which streets you take because you may drive through one of the city's most dangerous intersections. WHSV's Lisa Pappas explains where they are. New at 11, Lisa. Dion, the most dangerous roads might not surprise you. They're where you'll find the most traffic in Harrisonburg. Now police are trying to find ways to make those roads safer. They're the most dangerous roads in Harrisonburg where the most people crash. <laughs> Harrisonburg Police Sergeant Pete Ritchie is mapping out where those areas are. This year's top three, a big part of Reservoir Street, Port Republic Road near JMU, and East Market Street by the Valley Mall. Drivers like Kenneth Hilliard aren't surprised that reservoir is the worst. I'm noticing and I've seen, a, you know, quite a few accidents. Richie says here on Reservoir Street between Cantrell and Neff Avenue, they've seen 50 car crashes this year alone. Just as if you put a pin on a map and you keep putting pins on a map and then you look at the overall map, you're like, wow, that's significant. We need to somehow do something about that. The map shows the most dangerous road by far is reservoir. The reason, Richie says there are lots of businesses and many distracted drivers. Plus, some of these accidents are because people motion people to come out from a business into the main roadway when it's not safe and not clear. Some drivers already know it's not safe and say they're extra careful on these roads. You have to be on defense besides, you know, your own driving too. You've got to look out for everybody and then they've got to look out for you too, but it always don't work that way. Richie says the city is already looking to expand part of Reservoir Street to help traffic. Plus, he says officers may add signs that say Reservoir is a high risk area to warn drivers. Dion. All right, Lisa, thank you. Now we are following a developing story from Canada. Police there arresting two men accused of planning to carry out an Al Qaeda supported terrorist attack. Let's get straight to those breaking details. This, take a look at it, is a video just in of one of the suspects. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police say the suspects were targeting a Canadian passenger train on one of its busiest routes in the greater Toronto area. The individuals were receiving support uh, from Al Qaeda elements located in Iran. The suspects were under surveillance for more than a year. They have a bail hearing tomorrow. And we have new breaking details in the Boston bombings. Investigators just saying that evidence suggests the suspects were motivated by religion and worked alone. All this after the surviving suspect is charged from his hospital room. Marcy Gonzalez breaks down what he's facing. A night of remembrance. The Boston University community celebrating the life of 23-year-old graduate student Ling Zi Lu, one of the three people killed in the Boston Marathon bombings one week ago. And on this solemn day, the teenager accused of plotting and carrying out the deadly attack learned he may now face the death penalty. The federal charges, including oh using God. a weapon of mass destruction, read to him today at his hospital bedside. Just more than an hour later at 2.50 p.m., a moment of silence. Marking the time the bombs went off near the finish line of the Boston Marathon exactly one week ago. Today, the scene along Boylston Street ceremonially handed over from the FBI to the city of Boston to continue the investigation. The search for an explanation ongoing as the FBI questions 19-year-old suspect Johar Sarnayev, hospitalized, wounded in the neck, but writing some answers. Was his brother the primary motivating force for him to become radicalized? Why did they end up doing what they did on that particular day? 
Much of the investigation is still focused on his deceased 26-year-old brother Tamerlan, examining his life, his recent trip back to Russia, as some question whether the FBI did enough to monitor him after they questioned him two years ago. Uh, they investigated it thoroughly and did not find terrorist activity domestic or, or, or foreign. And we've learned Tsarnaev will not be tried as an enemy combatant. Instead, he will eventually go to trial in federal court because he is an American citizen. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Boston. The wife of the suspect who died in a shootout says she's distraught. Catherine Russell learned through news reports that her husband was suspected in the attack. New at 11, organizers plan to kick up security, adding more surveillance, mobile units, and staff to one of Richmond's biggest race weekends. In just a few days, around 90,000 NASCAR fans will pack the Richmond International Raceway. Police have worked alongside the raceway to plan this weekend's event for the past year, but now they're stressing for everyone to be alert. If you see something, say something. You can't be everywhere all the time and attract this size with this many people. So we are relying on the fans not only enjoy themselves, but be alert to what their surroundings are. And if they see anything, to please call and notify us. Race organizers say the bag checks at the event will continue, but they're asking for people to give themselves more time at the gate for tighter security. The Harrisonburg Fire Department has similar technology that helped investigators find the Boston bombing suspects. You're looking at thermal imaging technology. That's what they use. Firefighters use that to find victims, pets, and even hidden fires. The technology helping to cut down search times almost in half. New at 11, a former private school teacher from D.C. is now on the FBI's most wanted list. The Bureau says in June 2008, pornographic images were found on a school camera that Eric Toth had. Now you're looking at two different pictures of the same man. Toth is also accused of producing child porn in Maryland. An Augusta County man is accused of inappropriately touching a young girl. Daryl Cobb is charged with three counts of aggravated sexual battery. We're told this comes from three incidents that happened between January and March. Cobb is due in court in June. New at 11, the Rockingham County School Board is working hard to create a better workplace for its employees. And in a district survey, most employees say they want more respect and trust. School board members met tonight to discuss ways to address those issues. Right now, they plan to have a committee meet with the superintendent every month to talk about what needs to change. The school board has also proposed a 2% salary increase for all employees. New details tonight on a sports pub coming to Harrisonburg that's been raising some eyebrows. It will open its doors in less than a week. We just found out the Tilted Kilt will open next Monday. The restaurant is known for its waitresses wearing skimpy outfits. The Tilted Kilt will be at the Valley Mall. Tomorrow, you'll want to avoid I-64 to get over Afton Mountain. VDOT will shut down a big part of the interstate to make some repairs. VDOT is using bulldozers like this one to remove some unstable soil. This project will reduce the risk of landslides, and this project is causing some huge delays, lots of headaches today. This project will continue through Thursday, so if you're headed over the mountain, take Route 250 instead. New details tonight on that storm system that moved through the state last week. The National Weather Service says a tornado touched down in Fredericksburg. Now that twister tore off the roof of an apartment building and uprooted trees. No one was hurt. And that system forcing Grand Rapids, Michigan to declare a state of emergency tonight. You can see the river here is overrunning its banks and it's also flooding some roads. Floodwaters are also taking over homes and businesses. It could take weeks before water levels return to normal. Now your first alert storm team forecast with Chief Meteorologist George Hirschman. And if you've been out tonight, you've noticed it's getting a little chillier out there for sure. That's due to a lack of cloud cover, although a few clouds reported down to the south around Waynesboro and uh, Stanton Fishersville area. And those temperatures are holding up just a little bit. Satellite radar not showing us much out there as far as any clouds. We do have a few clouds off the coast here. The low pressure system working its way up will not affect us here, providing some clouds and maybe a little isolated shower activity. Uh, and as I said, not really looking for that to make it into our area. Uh, water vapor showing plenty of moisture available along the coast. Not much here, very dry uh, in uh, actuality. And then to the west, well, we do have some moisture there and uh, a fair amount of it. Uh, some of that will cross the area by Wednesday. We are looking for some showers and thunderstorms. 47 outside the studios, mostly clear up and down the I-81, although, as I said, 
down in Augusta County, South Augusta County, we're seeing some cloud cover, and you'll see in a second some of the temperatures there reflect that. East winds about five miles per hour, and temperatures uh, that were called in by the weather watchers. Uh, we're looking lower and mid 40s, uh, 45 in 10th Legion, 44 Stanley, 45 in Luray, Winchester, 40, and then 46, 47, 48 when we get down into Augusta County, although a bit chilly there, 41 in Churchville. Lucy said 42 in Sparkling Springs. Uh, forecast map is showing it this way, high pressure to the northeast of us. That's supplying that north easterly, easterly flow uh, right now. That's keeping the temperatures down, so we have a cold night coming our way and mostly clear skies out there. We run that through for tomorrow. Start out the day, a couple of clouds, but some sunshine for sure, but a chilly start. And then as we move through the day, you'll see these winds starting to shift more to the southeast, and that's going to help really warm, some, uh, uh, warm us up for tomorrow, uh, certainly warmer than it was today. Now tonight, overnight, into the upper 30s is what we're calling here in the valley, uh, 38, Stanton, Harrisonburg, Woodstock at 36 to the west in the highlands. Uh, the higher elevations, 34, Petersburg, 33 in Franklin, and maybe even below freezing there in Monterey, so be aware of that. Uh, we look at tomorrow's temperatures into the lower and mid uh, 60, 65 Stanton, 66 over Moorefield, 64 in uh, Petersburg, and 63 Franklin, so things are going to be warm, and that's uh, because of the southeasterly flow with the winds, and much appreciated with uh, the sunshine out there. Now, the, the next seven days... They start shaping up pretty good, actually. 64 for tomorrow, 70 on Wednesday. Chance for some showers, maybe a thunderstorm. Uh, not going to amount to too much, I do not believe. That's a product of that frontal system trying to cross the area uh, Wednesday late and into Wednesday evening. Some of those showers might even carry into Thursday morning. And then the extended forecast, well, 62. We get a little cool off behind the front, as we have learned over the uh, uh, time. And as we move into the weekend, it starts warming back up upper 60s, 70 degrees, about where it should be this time of the year. I think we call it spring. Yes. <laughs> Chance for uh, <laughs> that a is little shower activity <laughs> as well uh, uh, over the weekend, but not looking for much as far as any accumulation. And you can follow along with us if you go to whsv.com and uh, follow the weather prompts, and we'll probably have something to say about the weather. You can read along with us. And there's always good information there. Indeed. All right, George, thank you. If you're heading to the airport this week, you might want to leave a little earlier. Why experts say travelers could see major delays, plus the policy the TSA just delayed. And we're protecting you from scams and ripoffs, the steps you need to take to make sure your personal information on your cell phone doesn't end up in the wrong hands. Tonight, we're helping open your eyes to scams and ripoffs. With it being Earth Day, one way to help the planet is by recycling your cell phone. But before you do that, you'll want to delete any personal information so it won't fall into the wrong hands. So here's what to do. Use the factory reset to wipe your device. Also, remove or erase SIM and SD cards. Remove any apps you've downloaded and the data associated with them. And after you've taken these steps, Double check to make sure your personal information is completely gone. New details tonight on those automatic budget cuts that kicked in this year. Tonight, those cuts could cause delays at airports nationwide and adding more frustration for flyers. John Schriffen explains in this consumer alert. Airline passengers all around the country are packing an extra bag of patience today with massive delays and cancellations expected across the board. Boarded a plane to back to LAX. Mm -hmm. We have still sat on the tarmac for about an hour and got different uh, viewpoints about what was going to be happening. And then they said that the flight was canceled, and then they voted whether they were going to be able to reroute the plane. These passenger horror stories are becoming more common, especially in California and New York, all because the government approved budget cuts are forcing the FAA to furlough a tenth of its air traffic controllers. Congress needs to fix this. Congress needs to fix a very dumb law. Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood says he sent out early warnings two months ago that this log jam would happen. We have tried to find every way possible to come up with $600 million at the FAA. Part of that has to be the furlough of up to 11 days, which includes controllers. Now the FAA is warning as many as 6,700 flights could be delayed every day because there aren't enough eyes to watch them all. It's like equating a, a toll booth on the highway. You know, if you have 10 toll booths and you can only open eight of them, traffic's going to back up. It's creating frustration for passengers at the airport and could start affecting your wallet.
airlines may have to cut seats. That'll drive up ticket prices because demand will still be high. And the FAA insists safety will not be an issue. Air traffic controllers are adding extra space between planes in the air. John Schriffen, ABC News, New York. And this just in, the TSA has just delayed its policy letting passengers carry small knives, bats, and other sports equipment on planes. Now to another consumer alert tonight. The nation's biggest banks are rolling out the next generation of ATMs. The latest models include features like video chatting with a live teller. Bank of America's new teller assist machines allow a customer to swipe a debit or credit card, driver's license, or photo ID. Then a live teller pops up on the screen to assist the user. Analysts say the banks hope to reduce costs and keep customers coming back. New at 11, Harrisonburg City, School, City Public Schools is getting Virginia Tech School of Education's Excellence in Education Award. It's for the STEM program. Those lessons teach the technological and engineering design process within the context of grade level math and science. Nationwide STEM competition winners had an exciting day in Washington because President Obama hosted the White House Science Fair. It features some 100 students exhibiting their projects at the fair. President Obama says when students excel in math and science, that helps the U.S. compete for the jobs and industries of the future. So uh, we need to make this a priority to train an army of new teachers in these subject areas and to make sure that all of us as a country are lifting up these subjects for the respect that they deserve. Mr. Obama held the very first White House Science Fair in 2010. Now take a look at this interactive map. It's for a bike and pedestrian plan for Harrisonburg and Rockingham County. A little technology here. A commission is asking people to comment on the current state of bike paths, roads, and sidewalks. You can take part in this by going to WHSV.com and under the Find It link. While growing up, many of us may have heard the phrases clean your plate or no, you can't have candy. What a new study says about how these attitudes toward food affect the child's weight. But first, caught on camera, a couple of thieves break into a car dealership, but not to take the newest model off the showroom floor. You see them carrying something. We'll explain what they are hauling out. That's a successful rocket test launch off the coast of Virginia. This was the third attempt for the unmanned rocket. Two previously scheduled launches were delayed by a mechanical glitch and bad weather. The real launch is expected to happen later this year. New at 11, Texas police are looking for the guys who stole a safe from a car lot, and it's all caught on camera. Take a look at this video. Police say the men broke in around 2.30 in the morning, and you can see one of the guys lead the way while the other two carry the safe out. Cops aren't saying what's inside that safe. We're checking in tonight on your kids' health. Denying certain foods to children or pressuring them to eat every bit could lead them to be overweight or obese. Now, that's according to researchers at the University of Minnesota. The study authors recommend eating regular family meals, having nutritious snacks at home, and for parents to model healthy eating by eating a well balanced diet and I don't know how I feel about that because I was told no about a lot of things and well I, look I at me. I was always so. told to clean my plate too but uh, you know another way to avoid obesity is to exercise. One way to do that? By playing sports. Yeah you could play some baseball. It